Ratchet and Hello. Clank rift apart. Rift apart. Yeah. What do you, that's, let's talk. Let's talk about the name Jeff Bacalar. Rift well, apart in the pantheon yeah. of butt and poop jokes that have formed the names of every Ratchet and Clank game. How do you feel about is, rift apart? Is it all just butthole jokes? Uh -huh. Did I miss the? I I think I missed that. I didn't. Let's wait. Let's go. I'm. I'm let's gonna. Go let's look up. Let's get a list here going. Uh, oh right, Ratchet and Clank. I have a lot of diarrhea. Was probably yeah a joke a, about butt. It was probably like a butt or a poop thing. Uh, there's the underpants one. Um, the mud the, pie one. Uh huh. There's the uh, uh -huh. going. Okay, so we have Going Commando, which was the second Ratchet and Clank game. Up your arsenal, which is oh just straight up like they want to stick weird alien guns in your ass deadlocked yeah. which is not a mainline game that's like a that's like a more of a, a multiplayer shooter uh and little, so that but the constipation innuendo is there sure yes no that's deadlocked like You're a deadlocked. jury my ass is like a jury is what i'm saying it's hung <laughs> right but uh it's, it's crotchal in hmm. nature ratchet and clank future tools of destruction i guess tools is maybe the joke there Okay. Like I mean, sure. We're that's a bit of a stretch, but I'll, I'll allow are all, it. Yeah, I guess the, the the further we go, maybe these get to be more more of a, of a stretch. So maybe Rift Apart is kind of the like return to glory. Quest for Booty was a downloadable game, uh, but it, it did come out. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's right there. A crack in time, okay. like an ass now crack. Just, now we're not. Like now we're not even like, trying anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there was DLC or something. There was Into the Nexus, which doesn't... I don't know. Uh, the PSP game was called Size Matters. I thought this was a kid's game! It's not a kid's game. This is for... Right. This is 18 and up Secret Agent Clank. What is even that? No. Um, and now we come to Rift Apart, which I keep almost saying backwards, which I suppose is where the joke lies there. Why, wow, um, you almost say a part rift? I don't I almost, No, I almost say ripped a fart. Ha <laughs> ha duty. Yeah. See, Sarah, it's ass stuff. Patch and Clank, all about that ass. There's a colon uh, in the title, is there not? I, yeah. Shit, man. Every, wait, is every game about this? <laughs> ah! um, let's let's talk about Rift Apart because uh my friend, I am gonna say it right here now. Rift Apart is the best Ratchet and Clank game I've ever played. I think you, I think it is as good as it has ever been, which I suppose is a different way of saying the same thing, but I really like that first game. Uh, when it first came out, it was revelatory in a lot of ways. Um, mm. Yes, it's, uh, I am so close to the end. Um, it it, it kind of keeps going a little bit. It, it, there's a lot of false finishes or something there, but, uh, but I'm very close to what seems like the ending, I think. Um, but it is great. It is yeah. so, it is such a great realization of what Ratchet and Clank has been. And for me, it's like that whole thing of like, Hey, the PlayStation five, the things they're able to accomplish because of the fast load times and just the overall fidelity of the game, um, really, really work for me. I, I was totally just endlessly impressed with just like how fast it moves because yeah. it's it, it's it, it helps it, it just the pacing of the game and the story and all other stuff because the load times can be so much faster um even in story sequences you've got elements where it's like okay i'm gonna you know i'm jumping back in my ship and going to another planet something you've been doing since the early 2000s in this franchise and it just is like okay we're like cross-fading from one planet to the other and then here's the ship coming in for a landing like it feels cinematic almost in a way because yeah. that's just an establishing shot the same way a movie would do it um, totally complete yeah. with like star wars wipes and all these fun you know transitions and just to be clear we do have about 20 minutes of footage that we can talk over yeah. uh, get going in just a little bit but um you know what you and i were talking about yesterday uh what we were saying like ratchet and clank this game really could could you know like uses this ps5 like needs this ps5 sort of technology 
uh, in a way that I feel like, you know, you're sort of alluding to, it had not really been able to hit that next sort of level for a while. And this, I think this whole package, what Rift Apart presents is that realization, that sort of, uh, you know, moment for this franchise that is the whole package to me is just a really impressive overall sort of thing. I mean, do, do you want to, do you want to start jumping into this footage or how, yeah, how do you want to well, do this? Let's take a look at it. I mean, I think the the last thing I'd say before we get into it is like is, is that I, I agree with you. Like the putting it on PlayStation Five <clears throat> and being able to oh god <clears throat> take it. Oh yeah, uh, no. Look, this is what happens when you make a seven a.m. embargo. Okay, I know, I know. This is how it works. Um, this is it. This is it. And uh, yes, the, the being able to use that that power in that PlayStation Five, I think, it is is what really kind of makes it exciting all over again um i totally. mean not that the not that the last handful of ratchet games have been like bad games or anything but they got into a rhythm where you're like yeah i know what this is and i think this game is also very familiar like you know it is it is gold bolts and fun guns and all that other stuff and 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 the same way you expect it but i think set against the backdrop of like okay you've got a bunch of new controller fun and you've got like this this visual fidelity um and the load time stuff i think that really it turns it into something that you know it, it becomes more like a movie almost where yeah. the the pacing it really just keeps moving you don't have to stop you know you never have time to stop and like look at your phone and be like eh, what's going on um while this loads and eh, i'm gonna go do something else like it, it just keeps going and and i really appreciated that about it uh, the, I, I remember i don't know when this was said or when it became really popular sort of common speak about you know, a lot of games like this, I think it was angled specifically towards Ratchet and Clank, but it was the whole idea of like, you're going to play a Pixar movie, right? Like that right. was the whole, yeah. and, I, and you know, I think th that sort of jokey kind of, uh, you know, uh, eye rolling comparison, you know, take that for what it's worth. But this is the thing where it's like that continuous flow of a game where yeah. you're right. Like there is just no there. You kind of don't even have time to take it all in uh, is, is something that I'm discovering and having replayed the beginning a few times now, you know, to get some of this footage and to also just show my kid a bunch of this stuff. And it's just so much to take in and, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a really great ride for sure. Yeah, I, 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 it's it's one of those things. It's hard to say. You're right because it became such a joke. The whole like it's like a Pixar movie. Like they were trying to sell the PlayStation Two on that stuff. Um, but this is kind of that. Like this is yeah, kind of that. It. Uh, it took a long time <laughs> to get there, but they, this is this is kind of that. So <laughs> it turns out um, just need a lot more RAM, and here we are. And, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, is that another? But is that like a? Okay. Why don't we just? Get the footage going. <laughs> Another butt thing. Yeah. Uh, so here uh, right now is early on. Uh, this is maybe what half hour in or so. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is okay. So this is that first futury city thing. And uh, I guess it's funny because like the world, you know, it's tough to like do a lot of the world building stuff because you're kind of moving around so much through stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but uh, I don't. You you would probably know better than I. But this sort of like warp jump thing that is that new for this game? The, you mean the the circle button, the dash? Yeah, I believe the dash is new. I I didn't play a ton of the last couple of games in the franchise, but uh, the dash. So the, the, for that the first time I did that dash and saw that graphical effect. Of, yeah, I was like, huh? like ratchet stretching out and like that that effect. I, I was literally like, holy shit, like, look at this. Uh, like, it, it it just looks great. <laughs> like, that dash really, uh, fidelity on the dash is really impressive. Is, it, is, wild, there, Jan, is there any way we can get a little bit less gameplay volume? Um, so I can, I can hear Jeff a little and bit better. Um, it's, it's cool because you'll, you'll sort of, you know, you'll, you'll, get access to a lot of weapons as you do in, in ratchet games and they level up as you play and yeah. when you see a level up you get this slow motion sort of effect and if you catch a dash during that slow-mo it is yeah. just like a wild thing to behold um so the standard sort of upgrade stuff you know i 
I'm not gonna lie. I, I I'm I'm glossing over this part a little bit in playing the game. I I, I just you know so far I'm about well, I I'd say five hours, weapon. six what hours in, and I have mm -hmm. not. I don't know. Have you felt the impact of of this sort of upgrading? Absolutely. Yeah. I, so I, yeah. I focused on the. I, I did. The, I upgraded this gun all the way first. Um, okay. And and got every single pip on the tree. Like the the guns go up to about level five uh, mm -hmm. before the, and then you kind of hit max level. And every time you level up, that tree expands. And so the crystals right. you're finding around the world are the the currency you use to upgrade those. And. Uh, that can be stuff like, you know, with some of these later weapons, it's like, oh, hey, these lock-on missiles, what if you could fire two instead of one? Um, <clears throat> or the saw blade gun, it's like, oh, this is going to rotate and bounce around guys a little bit more and um, and do more damage and, and stuff like that. So in some cases, especially for some of the, the later guns, like those those first sets of upgrades become really, really meaningful. Um, so that that's... I have been searching every single corner for those things and eventually get to a point where like they they fill in on the map really nicely like the there's mm. they they let you know where the gold bolts are when you get close to them they let you know where the the spy bots are and 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 where the the raritanium crystals are and all that sort of stuff so it, it's not like there are things to find but it doesn't make it like a hassle um sure to to dig that stuff out and you do get you are rewarded with that rare titanium when you take down like bosses as well right um, yes yeah as, as you know in addition to kind of like finding it in the world this uh you know when you start playing you you start to have these massive kind of battles like in this little enclosed area here and i you know i i was using that weapon wheel a lot uh in the yeah. beginning and then i sort of you know, uh, switched over to like the, the four directional shortcut stuff on the D-pad and the flow is great. I mean, I, there's something about these encounters that um, are really just like a kind of awesome thing to balance, right? Like the, these engagements are so much fun to kind of swap around weapons and, and really yeah. find your way through. And, and, you, and I think what it does is because the ammo is... You know, there are moments where you're kind of looking for ammo for that super powerful gun. You you have you're forced to kind of get creative, right? And and kind of yeah, you know, adapt as it's, you play. It's it's built to it's, it's built in such a way that you kind of have to try out a lot of different weapons. You know, especially mm -hmm. early on when you only have like four of them. <clears throat> you know, you're you're not always going to be able to rely on your your favorite, and so it kind of behooves you <clears throat> to to use everything in your arsenal, especially because that right. stuff levels up, and so. <clears throat> that's where me kind of really caring about the upgrade system matters because like guns that I've leveled up to level five, I stop using them unless I'm in a pinch. And then it's like, okay, this is old faithful. I know I can pull out this electric shotgun thing you're using here, which as you upgrade it now, when I pull down the trigger all the way, it fires four times really rapidly. Um, and which, which is devastating to yeah. most of these enemies. Uh, and there is and, a lot of so, like, interesting, uh, you know, controller, uh, you know, it, advantages of that, you know, of, of yeah. what they do in that haptic sort of feedback. And, you know, every gun now has these like half pull, full pull, you know, variety sort of stuff, which I think is super effective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of doing the returnal thing there. They, they kind of make both triggers into uh, GameCube triggers in a way, depending on the gun, like every gun's going to be a little bit different. So, you know, like that shotgun is, is if you, if you do a, half pull you'll get one shot if you get a full pull it'll just dump two or if you've upgraded it'll dump four um hmm. even the the main kind of or the first weapon the little blaster you get as you upgrade it it eventually it becomes kind of a spread shot and so it's shooting three bolts out at the same time but if you kind of half pull it it'll do a slower rate of fire but only fire one and be much more precise so if you right. kind of want that uh which I, I never did but but that's that's a good option. That later on, there's a a. You know, I won't get into too many of the different guns, but there is a sniper rifle in there that if you do a half pull, it'll aim down sights. If you do a full pull, it'll slow down time for a brief moment to let you kind of line up your headshots and stuff like yeah. that. Um, you know, just kind of as an example, this this negatron beam cannon thing is like a pull down the trigger and hold it, and it rumbles while it charges up and then lets off. Like the the controller stuff is pretty well done, I think. Um, 
So this is uh this is like sort of the first time the the dimensional real time sort of shifting, I guess. I mean, you are exposed to it pretty early on, but this is the first time that they kind of do it while you're battling uh, a mini boss here, which I just Yeah. I mean, I've played this battle this this one, you know, four times ready and it's just like Oh, this does not really get old in in what they do with the swapping back and forth in dimensions. Now, look like where you go in that other world before you hit the city is probably not super big, uh, but you know, it's n nevertheless you know, you know, it, an effective kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's uh, w when it does stuff like that. There, there are a handful handful of moments where it's just like throwing you between dimensions over and over yeah. again, and I think it's really effective, but it's not. Hmm. It's not you. You don't have a lot of free control over that. It is right. like happening to you, and so it feels exactly. like these almost. It, it is these kind of like scripted sequences, or yeah. in some cases, it's like you're on a vehicle type thing and you're racing through dimensions. And and so it's not. You know, I think when when they showed some footage early on, you're like, oh man, you're going to be warping between dimensions at will and doing some stuff like that. And there are moments like that, but it's not. It's, it's not, not like the entire game. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Uh, this, this is just like a little bit of, you know, virus patrol minigame here that, uh, you know, maybe not my favorite part of, of this stuff. Yeah, but. it's it's fine. Like, I ended up doing all of them. Um, yeah. Got the trophy for it. Uh, and, you know, th th it, it overstays its welcome ever so slightly. The other minigame that is like Clank figuring out dimensional... Um, possibilities and, and and you know it's kind of a, a, a little puzzle mode the same way they've in, in, in the same fashion as they've done with clank in the past uh i thought that was a pretty good little mini game but these yeah. virus buster ones are, are kind of there is some of that in this uh in this montage cool. here we have as right. well yeah. um and then yeah you're also playing as a rivet yeah uh also a lombax but from a different dimension uh i i have really enjoyed the story for sure uh in in the game um the interaction between the characters and stuff um between rivet and ratchet and and just the the kind of overall idea of you know ratchet is as far as he knows the you know he doesn't know where the other lombaxes are they're they're in some other dimension and so <clears throat> that kind of sets the stage for all this dimensional craziness uh in in the first place is you know that kind of hunt for like hey what what are where are the other lombaxes um it kind of gets us to and this it, point it, yeah and, it, and it's fun like you know having them discover at the same time they're just like there's there's more lombax like you know that's it's right. just fun to yeah. to watch that unfold you know yeah um, yeah and then the way they work it is is level you do not choose characters you choose a planet and that planet is a task that Rivet is doing, or that planet is a task that Ratchet is doing. It's not so. They set up a lot of dialogue where it's like, as you're leaving a planet as Rivet, if you have selected a level that is a Ratchet level, she's like, "I wonder what Ratchet is up to," and then it crossfades to the other ship, and right. and shows that. Which there's, I don't. Hmm, the game's been patched since I started playing it, so maybe this is something they fixed. But I got one of those lines of dialogue before the two characters were aware that the other existed. Like I did oh, the levels in a specific order where it was like where she said like what's ratchet up to and I was like you don't even know what a ratchet is yet but that's, <laughs> yeah. but that's um you know minor stuff um here's a pocket dimension these are little side areas um that are just little it, jumping puzzles reminded me of um one of the a couple of the recent Mario games where they're just like or like in in Odyssey where they're just like here's a right. door and then behind it is a more traditional platforming level like you kind of these aren't always traditional platforming levels but but you'll have like little jump puzzles or in this case the little bug vehicle sequence thing um and these all end with you getting a piece of armor and there's a lot of different armor the armor gives passive bonuses even if you're not wearing it so it's like you'll get like five percent more xp or if you have all three pieces of a set of armor it'll be 15 percent more xp or or take less damage from this type of enemy and like those sorts of of bonuses, um, and I've got most of the armor now. But this is what I'm talking about. As you see, like the, you know, you you are traveling through dimensions, and so the the look of it is changing dramatically, right. moment to moment. But at the same time, 
you know it's a pretty it's a pretty set path it's not uh yeah. you know the, the task you're trying to accomplish here is a is a pretty um pretty defined so it's, it's not like you're willy-nilly warping dimensions yourself and and the game has to account for that and what it's going to load when and stuff like the the loads are very fast but it's also very kind of predefined yeah definitely i you oh. know i wonder i yeah the, the, that that was real that was a real heavy flower that we bumped yeah. into there uh, you know, I wonder, like, uh, what... Oh, and just to be clear, this is the... Um, there's different performance modes of the game. So what we've been watching mm -hmm. this whole time is the fidelity mode. And I believe the last... Uh, and that's a 30 frames mode with ray tracing. There is a... I believe the last mode that we'll see here with this last boss battle that'll come up in a few minutes is the... Um, what are they calling that? Like performance RT, which I think is right. like a down res 60 frames with ray tracing. So, yeah. you know, so they, the, the most noticeable thing is obviously the frame rate, which you'll see will really, you know, bump up when you uh, when we get to that last boss battle here. But yeah, I haven't that tried said, that yet. So, I mean, I've, I've played most of the game before that got patched in. And so mm -hmm. the performance modes got patched in yesterday, I think. Um, yeah. And oh no, sorry, it was it was over the weekend. Um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, I've been playing it at 4K 30, and <clears throat> it's you know it, it at least runs stable. I, I do love a good frame rate, but also I kind of want to see all the bells and whistles just to see what it looks exactly. like. And that um, is the default sort of you know mode, uh, as it says there in the settings. Like the fidelity mode is what it will play on if you don't do anything. Ah, okay, um, yeah. So yeah, here's the uh, here's the Clank minigame stuff where it is like a Lemmings kind of thing where you're yeah. directing these holographic versions of Clank through this pl platformy puzzle that involves uh, the you know assigning these like you know ability orbs to certain areas of the map and getting all of the holograms to get across from one side to another is basically, I guess, like the quick pitch for what that mode is. Yeah, yeah. And you do that a handful of times over the course of the game. And I I found it to be pretty engaging. Like, it, it never gets super difficult. Um, mm. But uh, but it's like just enough to where you kind of have to sit and think about it and go like, okay, I've got all the spheres. Where do I put the spheres to direct these guys from? from right. one part to the other and eventually it gets more complicated where it's like okay i need to do this to get them to run on this because they need to step on this platform and while they're running over the platform or they're running over this button that moves this platform i then need to do this and then do that and and so it, it does become you know multiple steps and 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 all that sort of stuff i, I thought it was pretty good um the, this, and i really like the later weapons I... we're not going to spoil you know a ton of that stuff here right uh but uh but i think as you go on like the game does a really good job of making the early weapons feel very obsolete just from a damage mm. output perspective like that default blast cannon this this weapon here is basically useless now <laughs> um <laughs> and and that's nice because again like they haven't always done the best job at forcing you into using all the weapons like it's definitely been a franchise where I feel at times you can just use the default can like if you especially if you're fully upgrading it it's that bioshock problem of like I've fully upgraded the wrench and I can murder everything with it um but like the you fully upgrade this this blast cannon thing relatively early on if you want to but then you you have to replace it with with better stuff because it just you know it's going to take too long to kill some of these enemies and it's not even going to stun some of the enemies to get them to stop shooting at you so you 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 need to kind of move to bigger and better stuff which is uh which is a nice problem to have it really forces you to, to dick around with everything Definitely. okay so here's your here's here's your 60 frames performance rt action there you go uh i mean the note the difference you know i I'm, I'm sure it translates on the stream here a little bit but in person the difference is immediately noticeable did you notice the the drop in resolution because it's it's moving to a dynamic resolution here um instead of a steady 4k both the performance modes do I, i'm guessing that the performance mode that doesn't have ray tracing probably just reduces resolution less frequently yeah um, i mean 
you know, I think in the moment to moment stuff, you really aren't going to notice it. I always err on the side of like, let's let Digital Foundry figure that out. <laughs> you sure. Know what I mean? Sure. Like, but I, but, and I, and I'm very curious to hear what, what they have to say. But, um, per, you know, experience wise, you, it, it has not been a thing that I've noticed. A, you know, the thing you notice is the frame rate bump. Um, right. And, yeah. you know, for some people who, who want to prioritize that element of fidelity, like you are taken care of in a way that does not compromise the rest of the uh, experience for sure. That's great to hear. That's always my worry. Like I'm always afraid, like when, when they added that stuff to Spider-Man, but it turned off ray tracing, I was like, well, part of the, one of the bigger things they kept pushing about the PlayStation 5 was that it's got ray tracing built in. I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, and, and see what it does, and and so I, I I'm always like afraid to turn on some of those performance modes because I just especially early on in the console life cycle I just want to see that stuff, um, and and so I was stuck with 30 frames a second for most of that game because I, I actually didn't like the way that game looked without all the cool shadows and petals and reflections. And, no, and for sure, stuff, and so. and I'm I'm there with you. I have that same uh, whenever I play these games, and you know that that is the sort of you know, it's par for the course now where you, you do need to make the choice, right? It is it is preference. So, you know, I, you know, obviously if, if, if it could all be in there, uh, it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's obvious, you know, limitations of just what we can do on these locked consoles. And, uh, you know, that that's sort of what it is. I guess that's just sort of the reality of it. But I, I agree. Put it like, on a PC, solve that problem. <laughs> which... <laughs> probably will happen i mean yeah uh you know so yeah it i think spider-man was maybe for me more noticeable uh i'm sure there'll be plenty of comparison videos that do side by sides of this that point right. out what's really not there um and i'll you know be happy to watch that stuff too but for the core experience you know it's it's it feels really good no matter how you play this game Right. Um, yeah. I, that that also leads me to wonder a lot about what this PS4 experience is going to be like. Um, well, this is—I don't think this one's coming to PS4, is it? Oh, it's, it's not okay. Is it? I, no, I, I. I always like. I. It's funny because like, <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of talk. I don't know about this game specifically, but where like this was going to be a generational. Oh, this is not coming. Yeah, this won't be on PS4. But, oh, um, yeah. Sony believes in generations, and that generation is yeah. called the PlayStation 4, it turns out. They just didn't specify <laughs> which generation they were talking about. Uh, it's, it's funny, because, like, yeah, I wonder what this will look like on PS4. It won't look like anything, because it's not going to be on PS4. Yeah, but, like, yeah, they. I think the thing they just announced is Gran Turismo and God of War. We're going to we're gonna come to PS4. Right, right, so. right, right. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, Horizon as well. Um, yes. But this and Returnal, you got those at least. Um, and and but you know but that's that's what it speaks to where we're talking at the top where it's like this game needs this uh, you know sort of thing yeah. I mean it, you know that that is a thing that has become very apparent out of the gate in playing this where it's like this game it's it's yes. time that it had this stuff and it takes advantage of it in a way where it feels like a true kind of leap so um, you know, yeah, I, I think that like I said, that helps. That makes the experience it. for me in, in a lot of ways is is the yeah. it, it's the load times, it's it's the 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 better the better graphics, um, all that sort of stuff, and it plays well. I mean, like what you know, it plays the way you expect a Ratchet and Clank game to play, right? I mean, I, I think the controller helps with some of that in terms of like you you feel like you have a little bit more control over like these half press, full press, and some of the the options that some of the guns give you there is really neat, but you know. Generally speaking, you grind on rails and jump between them as train cars are coming your way. You you are flying on ships to go to different planets. There's side activities. You know the the classic kind of Ratchet and Clank cast appears uh, in in roles that might surprise you. Um, you know it's a uh, it's a good mix. It's I, I feel like it doesn't cut away. I, I and maybe I'm just misremembering some of the early games in the franchise, but I feel like it mm. doesn't necessarily cut away for full screen cut scene in the cockpit as much as it used to. Like you know, in terms of just like here's a a funny little video we made uh, with its, the the boss character talking trash or you know or whatever. Yeah. Like it doesn't do that as often, though it does does do that. Um, <laughs> 
and uh, uh, I think generally it just it's super well paced. Uh, I think the the load times and stuff really help with that. Um, I think the side activities for the most part have been pretty. So that's that's why I haven't finished it yet is because I've been doing damn near everything. Um, but there's a combat arena that I got the bronze tier done and was just like, ah, I'm not going to go do silver and gold for this. I don't. Yeah. Maybe I don't need to do that. And and there's a another part where you it wants you to fly around and collect 60 of these eggs or flowers or egg flowers or whatever it is. And I got 30 of them and, and, and was just like, what am I doing? I got to stop <laughs> doing this and go finish this game like that. Those were the two things that jumped out along the way in terms of just like, I these things feel like grindy, busy work, but most of the side stuff is is pretty good um, in terms of it just being like unique content, not not just some grindy thing. Like, here's just a little story beat with some side character and just like, here's this chef doing something. You're like, okay, what's going on over here? And I think that stuff's been been really good. Um, and And yeah, I've had a a really really great time with it it's not you know i, I don't think it's just some earth-shattering re take on what it means to be a ratchet and clank game like it, it does feel very familiar along those lines but yeah. again i think the improvements that they've made some of which come from just being on a new platform um are all really smart and, and really help that experience along in, in a way that that really freshens up the whole thing i'd kind of gotten to a point where with the ratchet games it's like i respect these a great deal i really loved the first game and then when the second game came out i was like this is just a little too much like the first it's like you reskinned the menus to a different color yeah. and dropped them some new levels like it was a tony hawk game or something and and from there i kind of was just like respect them from a, a maybe a little bit more of a distance in terms of just like these are really good but i you know i feel like i played them and and this this has me back on board in a way that like when and if they decide to make another one of these um if it ends up being on on this platform or, or whatever platform, um, I would definitely check out more of this. Like it's uh, it's been really great. It's tough to really uh, pinpoint like what that sort of um, thing is, that tangible thing that like uh, puts you over the over the, the 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 ledge for why this is so engaging, right? Like because I'm right there with you, where you know I I definitely. I played the first one and I played the reboot of that first one that they did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I touched all the other games, um, but just kind of found myself at, at some point bouncing off them. And I, and I wonder like what it is, you know, I don't think it is one thing. I think it is a combination of a lot of different things that this game is able to do. Uh, and just, you know, whether it's the fidelity or like the other really painstaking, uh, attentions to detail that I have found myself obsessively looking out for where whether it's like you know armor exploding off enemies as you you know slowly uh, fight them uh, the just the overall you know intensity of those mini boss uh, battles that feel so big and so like yeah. when we were showing the um, those kind of like dinosaur mini boss you know mid-level fights there the chaos that unfolds through all that and how you are you know, dodging and, you know, that dodge gives you that tiny window of, of, uh, invincibility that you're just able to parlay into all these different things. It, there's, you know, it is just a bunch of all those little things kind of floating up, right. That, yeah. that really pushed this over the edge for me. It's, it really is something that I, I was kind of surprised by. I, I remember when I first started playing it, um, you know, about a, like a week and a half ago, I was talking to, you know, other people who, who had had it and I'm just like, would, would it like what's going on here why am i so into this is it because yeah. ps5 is very desperate for for something <laughs> or is or is this game just really kind of kick ass and you know i think it's both of those things but uh Definitely, i think yeah. it's more that this game kicks ass uh it yeah is, ass it is, finally like, bringing it back around to the, the topic the cyclical, of the day <laughs> yeah the cyclical ass uh i so I, I think i think to answer your question i think it's the mobility i think there's there's a like an there's a speed to the movement and just the the so it's the dash is is one part of it you get these rocket boots that let you hit r1 at any time and start moving at a much faster speed and when you are doing that you get a much longer jump and so the platforming becomes 
they, they don't force you to do that very often in terms of just like, oh, I can only get over here if I do this big speed jump and boosted jump. And so it kind of lets you look at these things and go like, oh, well, I could jump and pop, 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 pop up to this, or I can just do one good boost jump here and get across this gap and keep moving. Yeah. And, and, and having options like that mixed in with in combat arenas, they'll give you these little rifts. You'll see them. You, you saw them in some of the footage where it's just like, here's these kind of clear rifts that when you look at them, they glow and change color. Basically, if you hit L1 when you're looking at one of those and it's glowing, you will teleport to that spot in the arena. So it gives you ability to just get around these arenas in, in combat settings really quickly. And so all those things combined just give you a lot of movement options where, you know, like I still occasionally like to use the, the wrench in combat. So mm -hmm. you just boost dash up, get this big long jump and come down with the wrench and then just start shooting everything around you. And, and it's, uh, it just feels really good. They, they've really just the the way that a lot of those movement systems work together um i think just give you a lot of fun options in combat but also it, it is helps with the platforming as, as well so um so I, I think i think that definitely goes a long way to kind of freshen all this sort of stuff up um yeah. and and then the you know obviously with the, the graphics and but uh, yeah, you know again like it, it's yeah yeah, a, a ratchet game is also only as good as its guns, and not to just talk about. I, I you know, if you've played other ratchet games and kind of know, like, oh, they're gonna have one glove that does something wacky, and then maybe two that does something kind of wacky, and turn enemies into something else, and do this and do that. Like they hit all those notes, um, but I think the the weapon variety feels really good. The upgrades, again, like I think help take them the rest of the way to where it'll, you know, there are definitely cases where there are weapons where I'm like, ah, this one seems kind of ass, but as yeah. I've gotten it up to level four and gotten some of the upgrade trees filled out and stuff, you're like, oh, wait, this is actually now my favorite weapon for the next couple of hours until I get something else. Um, I think my only complaint on some of that is the weapons start getting really expensive and you always want all of them. And I feel like I'm going out of my way to get bolts whenever I can. I am bolting the fuck up Mine whenever possible. But yes, it, it is never quite enough to uh, get all the weapons. I, I don't think I will get all the weapons by the time I'm finished with the game. I think it'll be the sort mm. of thing where I'm, I may have to go back and grind bolts somewhere else to, to get enough to, to get the last handful of weapons but you eventually i think you fill up two full weapon wheels in that game yeah of like yeah oh, eight They're, the like, weapons have their own story right like to that to that end right like like you said like they're the evolution of that stuff is another kind of you know part of that puzzle i yeah it's interesting like um you know for me i that was always the thing that i remember be becoming very disinterested in uh you know sooner than later in those older kind of games and um i mean there's like a there's a like you said there's there's some weapons where you're just like this, this is probably one i can pass by like there's one where you yeah. become like a garden hose or you're like you like shoot out a garden hose that like and then all it's, of a sudden you're like holy shit like, like no this like especially when you start upgrading <laughs> it to where those things thing. start throwing out healing items and all the other yeah. stuff like that thing is is weirdly powerful like the the wacky weapons in the game are, are 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 pretty powerful um i feel like they haven't always been that when you're throwing out disco balls and they dance and they stop and stuff like that that one never really did it for me but when you're turning them into plants uh that one that one ended up working out uh, a lot better than it sounded from the description <laughs> um but i didn't start using it until way late in the game so maybe that's part of it yeah. is like you've got like five enemies all kind of shooting at you and they are hard to stun uh with many of the weapons so they will just keep shooting at you and so you were just dodging 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 but oh you're like oh wait what if i try to turn them into plant and then that will get them to stop shooting long enough to let me focus down some of the other ones or or whatever um and yeah i, I just think tactically the weapons come together in a way that they haven't always um, but again, like at some point I, I kind of stopped playing deep into a lot of the ratchet games because they just kind of became a known quantity in a way. And I kind of just fell off of it a little bit. Um, but the, the bits and pieces, you know, the playing that first one and I played through the, I, I played through the first three, I guess all the way. Mm. Um, and then after that kind of got a little less 
interested in playing them to completion and then through the ps3 and stuff i was like ah these games are really good but i just i don't know but this i'm how, i'm fully back on board this is super fun how are you fi- have you found the difficulty throughout what uh has anything sort of jumped out at you i i i, I guess in the beginning for me i was a little surprised as to like some parts that are like oh this is this is kind of a challenge I, i'm digging it i mean h- how's that because obviously you're way further along yeah it's um they throw you in, they just throw more enemies at you you know they they just keep throwing more and more at you and so you'll get to these sequences where the big guys with the big spiky uh mine looking hands uh and and the guys that will shoot also uh like they start coming at you in droves and it's hard to get them to stop coming and hard to get mm-hmm. them to stop shooting um and and so like dealing with those situations you're kind of dodging out of the way. You're trying to get some distance. You're trying to make sure that you're you're running out of ammo for all your good weapons constantly because the rocket launcher can only hold eight shots or 12, I think, when you upgrade. Um, and so it, it is this process of just like, okay, I got to blow these guys up real quick and do this and do that. I hit. I stopped playing last night because I hit a bad checkpoint where there's just like three waves of those enemies in a pretty small room. And when you clear it out, there's a little bit of platforming and i fell off the ledge and it put me back at all those waves and i'd already died on that encounter like three times and i was like all right shit i'm just gonna (laughs) go to sleep and finish this up tomorrow but um but yeah it's not super difficult um as you gain xp um you know you're you're getting a longer life bar and stuff like that too which which helps and and so you know it's uh i'd say there's a handful of challenges there's just a handful of encounters that just feel like a little bit extra compared to some of the others and and those are the ones where it's like "Uh, i i died once here but mostly it's because i got sloppy or just didn't have the right ammo or or went into it missing half my life or you know just didn't didn't recover health well enough and um but it's i've never been stuck you know um so it's it's been it's been moving i've been playing on the normal difficulty it's got four difficulties i think mm-hmm. yeah maybe five I, I, yeah and um so i'm playing on what they what they deem to be normal um and you know it's got two more difficulty settings up from that also i'll say the trophies feel very attainable if you're into that sort of thing um it really is just kind of like collect all the stuff um but they do a pretty good job of highlighting that stuff on the map um so I, I'm looking at where I'm at right now and going like, oh, you know, I'm not going to have every single trophy by the time I roll credits, but it would be pretty easy to go back and buy these last four weapons, find all the spy bots, get like the last eight or nine gold bolts that I haven't gotten. Right. The gold bolts give you, they unlock um, fun extras, different skins, different rendering modes, big head, you know, like like the the sorts of, they're not cheats per se, but, you know, they just kind of unlock fun little little Easter options for you to fool around stuff, with yeah. yeah um and and that stuff's been all right um i haven't worn any of the armor because i think that the characters look good as is and you don't have to wear the armor to get the benefits right um, which i thought was great that was great like hey yes. you don't have to wear this goofy ass helmet to you know reap the benefits of that do that all the time thank you yes. that's great yes you know exactly um yeah so that's that's good but yeah it's you you can customize those characters to you know as you unlock that armor if if that's your thing but i just i thought that the way that they looked out of the box uh just looked the most natural and and slapping all this goofy looking bulky armor on them just didn't make a lot of sense um yeah it's uh what what do you think like uh i I was saying this because um i would you know i was i was a little hesitant about like playing this you know, with my kid, I was like, is this too intense for him? And I was like, no, this is fine. This is, this is totally a, a, an okay, I think game to, to have a kid watch. But I, at the same time, I was like, there, maybe I'm misremembering the sort of tone of this game, uh, in previous iterations, but like, it's got a bit of, it's a little, I don't want to say mature, but it's kind of grown up a little bit. Uh, I think in a way that, um, you kind of suss out a little early on. Uh, this is not an M-rated game. <laughs> that no, is not no. what this but, is. But, but like, it is it's, a game where they grown up. They'll talk bit. about. They'll talk about. Hey, these characters are going to die. Like yeah. there, there is you know, the concept of murder is not a foreign concept uh, here. So you know, but I, you know, I, I don't again. But you know, so yeah, I, I think that that kind of re- turns it up a little bit. 
intensity wise, but it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't strike me as the sort of thing that is, is, uh, like super, you know, again, it's not an M rated game it, it doesn't feel like it's trafficking no, in, sure. in that sort of stuff. It is just like, Hey, the concept of, of death is here and mentioned and stuff like it's that. It's always and here. Death it's is always, always here. here. Death is yeah, always it's just, here. Uh, it, but the, you know what i'm getting at is that i enjoy that i thought the, the tangible sort of like grown up of uh, you know that this game kind of exudes is like a thing that i am also excited about and, and kind of like feels good and to me while, while you're playing it um but yeah, yeah. the yeah. the ps5 has uh what i think to be uh, a sort of no-brainer and uh that's exciting yeah you know? for sure um Looking at chat here to see if we have any questions coming in. Yeah. Um, if, I think we've answered most of these, but uh, the one that I did, did want to mention that Nanderpuss is asking is, do the weapon upgrades carry over to each character or do they have their own weapons and upgrade paths? They do not. So any upgrade you get carries over to the other playable character. Um, and there's like a throwaway line of dialogue that they use to try to justify that for the guns. But when it's like... Um, some of the abilities like oh you've got the boost boots now that you found in this cave but now both characters have like like that <laughs> you know yeah, they, yeah, the game's they, all about dimensions that's yeah, the least of it kind of the, of, the exactly. of the problems going on there right like yeah it, it's it's kind of whatever um i don't i don't that didn't bug me too much but it was a, a moment of just like wait a minute how come they did that but you know whatever it, it's it's fine um and yeah, uh, uh, there's people asking how long did it take to complete? I don't know that I have a good hour count. I feel like mm -hmm. I am, if I am not on the last level, then I am probably on like the second or even third to last level. The game is longer than I thought it would like story wise. I'm going to say the game is longer than I thought it would be because it, you know, you, you start to sense things wrapping up and then, you know, you're like, Oh, okay. There's, there's more here for sure. Um, and I'm doing most of the side stuff as well. So I have yeah. probably put, let's call it eight or nine hours into, I, I can, here, I'm going to turn it on real quick. I'll at least say what the yeah, percentage is. And I, don't, I don't think it has an hour count, but I can at least tell you at what percentage in I am right now. Um, Someone's asking how many gigs the game is. I think it's like under 40, right? I'll Honestly? check. I'll check. Yeah. I can check. check well, um, hey, while you're in there, check it out. I'll, 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 in here. I'll check it out. People asking about the performance modes. We did in the beginning show fidelity mode and uh, performance RT. Um, so mm -hmm. when this is done, you go back and check that out. And the most notice noticeable thing is frame rate for sure. Um, yeah. Love some uh, frames. Uh, love those. Fr I mean, yeah. I mean, that for me, like, that was the biggest thing. Like, to not have it feel like it is uh, a hindrance and, and you're losing something is probably the key. And to me, you know, just off of my going back and forth, they do nail that. Uh, trailers asking if they use activity cards. I think they do. Yes, they, well, yeah. so they do, but I don't know that it warps you to, because there, there are activity cards for stuff like, um, I'm currently 80% complete. Mm. Wow. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You're getting there. Um, so yes, it does have some activity cards. It, it, it'll it'll give you some uh, some time counts on some of those where it's like right now yes. I'm sixty percent through the story mission I'm currently on, um, and then it says I have about fifteen minutes left on that one. Um, and I actually found that to be pretty accurate uh, for one time that I was like, I was like, oh, I want to play this a little bit. Got to go downstairs in, in a minute, and I was like, oh, I've got twenty minutes on this. That and it was it was pretty on the nose, which. It's always kind of mind blowing to me that like yeah they, yeah like how, how many people they, yeah. of different skill levels do they have playing this to determine that sort of stuff or is it, totally and they do have hints but it's not videos um it's uh they have hint text um so I have uh there's there's hints for like hey there's a pocket dimension here or hey where are all the spy bots where are all the gold bolts um and it'll just it just has a little bit of text telling you where each one is um and that seems more effective than some of the videos i've seen in other games like especially those astrobot videos that are just like just walk into the room and there it is you, you found it like some of those videos were pretty bad let me see the file size 
Um, 33.65 gigabytes. That's post day one patch. Um, people asking if it's worth playing uh, Ratchet and Clank on PS4. I, th- I mean, before playing this one, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's a prerequisite. Yeah. No, I, 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 the story, I think, sets it up mostly fine uh without that sort of stuff there'll be characters that you don't necessarily know like who is who who is this but at the end of the day it kind of they they, you can always infer it this says i have played this game for 21 hours but i know i have left it paused for uh, significant chunks of time so i've definitely not put a full 21 hours into it um but I've probably that probably means I've put like fifteen or plus into it to to do this. So, but like I said, I've been taking my time and getting a lot of side stuff and going around and hitting all these boxes to make sure that I can buy all these guns. So, yeah, uh, and, and I still can't, and I still don't have all the guns. So that's uh, you know, um, that's a thing. Um. Uh, HDR support seems good. Yeah, as far as I can tell, uh, we didn't capture um, the gameplay we showed earlier in HDR because that's always a fucking shit show. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, when I am playing that game in HDR, it looks pretty damn sweet. Yep. It's a real nice looking game. Definitely. And I like it. Definitely. And I'm excited to, pull, to finish it up. Um, and then... I don't know if I'm going to go for the platinum trophy. It, it definitely seems very attainable, um, but it would be a bit of a grind to go back and get like the last three or four guns that I haven't purchased. And um, unless a bunch of bolts come my way here near the end of the game, maybe that just kind of solves itself. Um, and then the the collectibles again, they're just kind of on the map. So, you know, you, you just have to get there and puzzle some of them out for sure. But generally speaking, that stuff feels... Um, feels very attainable and it doesn't feel like there are any that necessarily you would miss if you didn't get them in the moment like i assuming assuming the game opens up at the end and lets you go back in and get stuff i i assume but but again i haven't finished it so i, I don't know i don't know what it does when you when you actually complete it but i'm assuming that it will let you go back in the world and do stuff right on cool well, well yeah there I you think, have it there you have it that's uh that's ration and clank we'll we'll a little bit more about it on the bomb cast here in a couple hours um absolutely and uh and yeah thanks everybody for coming and hanging out with us uh game's out was it it's out friday right i believe so is it yeah. friday yeah or yeah thursday? It's one of those Soon. It's one of those yeah it's, it's like thursday morning if you're if you're here but thinking about new zealand i think is how that works now but it's a uh, but it's out uh out later this week and uh yeah thanks everybody for hanging out we'll be back in a couple hours with the giant bomb cast live for y'all premium subscribers Ooh. and uh and we'll see you soon take care of yourself All right.